Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 26 of Bumbling Through Birthright, that D&D campaign where you just go around stabbing things in the heart and trying to rule countries. It's going all right for us. I mean, so far. If you're new here, make sure you check out the playlist so you can just binge all the things that have happened since we started ruling this country, or mostly because I missed the first couple sessions. Or if you just missed the last session, make sure you check it out because there were Ice Jotun and Hydras and magical swords and all that fun stuff. So it's definitely a good one that you don't want to miss out on. But with that, let's just get into this session. session we had four player characters with us, Roz, Brindis, Val, and Rainier. We're still up in Aldvika, which is in Hoganmark, and we're just, you know, trying to figure out what to do with ourselves. Well, we were chatting with the Laird because, you know, we've been solving a few problems here, and he was like, we've got this issue with icebergs, and they're coming, and they're kind of getting into our port, and this is the only port for all of Hoganmark, so we kind of need to keep that open and so we came up with many stupid ideas on how to deal with these icebergs including like building a wall around the glacier because that helps walls keep things out nothing can get over walls or around them or maybe building breakwaters in front of the port or you know filling them up with gunpowder and boom lighting them on fire or i think my favorite was just attaching it to a boat and then dragging it down south like over here like this is the desert and um selling ice cubes it worked before we don't actually come up with a good solution for that so we give up and uh we're like future problem although if Jan was here i feel like maybe he'd want to invest in that we wander around the town a bit and the queen decides to order some tartans in her royal colors a thousand of them that she can give to very important you know units or people or whatever like here you go queen's tartan you're special and then you know we just kind of wander around the city for a while and then we remember the rumor has it also known as the rumor has we had fought them a couple sessions ago and we were like it'd be nice to kind of take care of them we definitely to think about getting rumor hazards and putting them on the icebergs because they kind of melt through things. So I mean, two birds, one stone, but you know, decided that maybe we should just deal with the queen at the moment. So away we head off to where we last encountered them and we start to track and we see if we can find a tunnel that will lead us to what we hope is the queen of the rumor has it. So we come across the tunnel and we start to go down the tunnel and it goes down and down into the earth and the deeper it gets, the steamier and more humid and stuff it gets until we come across this giant rumor has it. And it's the queen, or at least we assume it's the queen. And it's got this really cool ability, which is not so cool for the wizard who likes to just avoid detection entirely, where it can feel you moving in the ground. So the wizard goes invisible, doesn't do much. But we fight this thing in very close corners. It manages to grapple Rainier with its mouth and swallow him. And every time somebody gets swallowed by something, we make the joke from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It's thinner on the inside, guys! And so, anyways, Rainier's in there. Val manages to kill this thing and blah, Rainier spews out. So, get swallowed once. We find a little bit of treasure, but really the treasure was the friends we made along the way. No, it wasn't. It was the like gold pieces that we found. So the next day we decide to head out and kind of head back towards Aldrica and we come across this galleon ship that's just frozen in the ice and we're like, hey cool, let's go check that out. Rainier smashes through with his really cool new sword Sovereign and we get in and there's treasure chests, which is awesome. But there's also five pairs of red glowing eyes, which is less awesome pirate ghosts. They weren't too much of jerks, mostly just, they just, they didn't die an honorable death. They got stuck in the ice and they died, so they just wanted to go out and battle, so we gave them that. So that was cool. Kill some ghosts on a ghost ship. And there was actually quite a bit of treasure on it, which is kind of to be expected because it was a ship. So we got some money, there were some scrolls, which the wizard definitely hoarded, and then there was a weird enchanted hat. So gotta spend some time with that, but who knows what that'll do, but let's not put it on before we spend time with it because that could cause problems, I'm sure. From there, we continue our way back to Aldvika 
and just outside the city limits basically this weird giant frog like creature jumps out a frog hemoth and um it's mostly Rainier's fault because he was standing there basically I would like to fight something and so out jumps this thing and does a little and uh swallows Rainier that's two. It then swallows Roz, and Roz does not like to be inside things like Rainier seems to, and so that's not cool. But the neat thing is, is it takes enough damage that it has to make a save, and when it fails the save, blah, spits out anything it's got in its stomach. I was gonna say it's carrying, I guess carrying in its stomach. And so out we go, and then I feel like Rainier got swallowed again. I could be wrong though, but Val definitely did get swallowed, but she plays up Drax very well and kills it from the inside and goes, I did it! I mean, I guess technically in Guardians of the Galaxy, Drax didn't kill it from the inside. It's fine. It's fine. Nobody needs, nobody cares. <laughs> we also got a little bit of treasure there, which was nice, probably in its stomach, because it seems to like to swallow things. And then finally we made it back to Aldvika, where it was time for another long rest. It's like the higher levels we get, the more we need to long rest, because we just, the poor, the poor us. Poor us. <laughs> Brindis continues with her gun proficiency because she's getting there. She's getting there. Rainier goes and does some pit fighting, and then Roz spends a little bit of time with the scrolls that she found in the galleon and copying them out into her spellbook, so she now has Fog Cloud and Burning Hands. Fog Cloud, kind of useful, but Burning Hands, Roz just doesn't like to get that close to creatures if she can avoid it, so. And then she also spends time with the hat trying to figure out what it does, that magic hat that we also found in the Galleon. And it's this really cool hat of difference. So basically what happens is you can put it on and be like, while I'm wearing this hat, I'm going to be a monk. And you start at level one. You keep all your proficiencies and your hit points from your previous character, so it's not like you now get these new ones, but you can level up the hat. So say you want to be a monk, start at level one, fight that fight with the hat on, all that experience points goes into the hat, not into your person. So it's kind of a balancing act. We talked a lot about who wanted to take it. Brindis, well the character who plays Brindis was like, I'll take it and I will be a monk with a shotgun musket. Or I'll be a cleric with a musket. You know. At the end of the day though, Val decides to take the hat and she's going to kind of multi-class, but not really multi-class because you can't use it at the same time as a monk. So she now has a monk hat, and then she's a ranger. Monk, ranger, monk, ranger. And then in her long rest she decides to go bounty hunting. After we do this long rest though, we decide that we don't want to be here anymore, <laughs> so we just decide to take another long rest so that Roz can cast her right spell to transport us back to somewhere in our own country. So long rest time again. Brindis this time, instead of doing gun proficiency training, searches for a magic weapon. She finds two wands of the Pact Keeper, which she can use because she's a sorcerer and none of us could use, and she buys them both. Rainier searches for a magic weapon as well. He finds this really cool minor enchanted helm. It's called the Dread Helm, and it doesn't do anything other than the eyes close. So I mean, you could definitely use that to your advantage if you're trying to intimidate someone, like, oh, the eyes are glowing, they're more freaked out. So he buys that, and basically he just walks around with that and a loincloth. I'm sure he has furs because we're up north, but I just always imagine just this stupid helmet and a loincloth. Val goes bounty hunting. There are probably going to be no criminals left in the city when we leave it. And then, like I said, Roz casts her teleport right spell, and we head back to Val's shipyard. And now it is the year... 1526. So when we get back to the shipyard, work is going very slowly on the cog and everything there, and we're trying to figure out why. And it turns out that a shipment of lumber that was supposed to make it to the shipyard has not made it, and because we're headed back to Holland Coleman anyway, we're just gonna take a quick detour up to where it was coming from to see if we can figure out what the heck is going on. Like, was there, uh, did it hit a pothole? I don't know. So day one encounter, I mean, we're back in our own country. We find a druid that is tending to a bear that's injured. <laughs> and Roz is like, I don't know what to do. Here's a healing potion. And so the druid heals the bear with the healing potion. Kind of a waste of a healing potion. But then the druid's like, here, have my potion of growth that I had on me. I took the wrong one with me. Although it'd be really hilarious if the druid had given that potion of growth to the bear. <laughs> 
because they just have a really big injured bear. Day two and three, nothing happened. And then day four, we come across a cart on the side of the road. There's no drivers that we can see, but there are a couple burial mounds nearby. So that's likely why the shipment has not made it to the shipyard because the people are dead. Just, you know, chilling by the cart though, there's this guy on the side of the road, covered in mud, really dirty. He's the mud man. His name is Fergus Voidson, and he is an enemy of Val's. We've run into him before, but I guess now he's really angry with her and just wants to destroy her life and her livelihood. Because he's all like, oh, you cursed me, this is your fault. Well, as it kind of happens in big situations, the dice usually go in our favor. Val chopped off, I think it was his leg, and the DM couldn't like roll above a five, so it was not going well for the Mudmen, and Brindis managed to get the killing blow and get some blood points from that, so yay, people are slowly leveling up blood score abilities. We continued on to Namburg from there, and we sent somebody to go get the cart and bring it onto the shipyard, and then from there we just kept going on to Holly Holman because that's where we were trying to get to anyways. Along the way, we came across a couple wyvern, and if you don't know what wyvern are, they're kind of like dragons, but not quite. The difference is in the arms. Dragons have arms, wyverns have arms on wings. I think that's what it is, or it's the other way around, but I think it's that way. It was one of those really messy battles where you've got, you know, Rainier jumping on top of wyverns and trying to ride them and trying to bite them, and then wyverns trying to bite him because he's on the top, back of the other one and then magical darkness ensuing. It, it wasn't an easy battle. It was harder than the fight with the Onshay the Mudman, which, yeah, that one was super fast. And, but we finally took them out, and away we continued to Hauling Holman, where now that we're in a new season, we can have more domain turns. When we get to Hauling Holman, though, there's a weird tenseness in the air at the court, and we're not really sure what it is, so it's definitely something that we're gonna have to look into and see if we can resolve. Because if you've got problems where you're running your country from, you're gonna have problems in the rest of the country. So on her domain term, Brindis went first, she collected her taxes and all that, and she starts to disband a little bit of the army. I talked about before, we have a huge army and it is super expensive. She also finished up a road on the way to Hoganmark because again, United Highlands, it's nice if you have that infrastructure in place beforehand, and leveled up Hollingvik to a level four. And it actually went well this time. It wasn't like, oh, complication, you gotta go figure out what's wrong. So winner, winner. And lastly, she uses a little bit of her Regency, well, I mean like, 29 points of her regency or 30 points, whatever, to upgrade her blood score to 29, which means she gets a new ability. And it's a major ability and it's pretty cool. It's protection from evil up to 10 feet. So that's pretty awesome. Next, Rainier, seeing all the success the queen has, decides to level up his hunting lodge in Arvald and fails. So, problem. I wonder what it is this time. Val puts more money into the cog that she's building, and at this rate it should be done on the next domain turn in the summer, so that's pretty awesome because then we can sail anywhere without having to pay for it. I mean, she'll have to pay upkeep for it, but we don't have to be like, here's this much money, take us there, here's this much money, take us there. And she also spends some time trying to learn navigational instruments, get her proficiency in that, but while she's doing it, Valley, her trainer, that's the guy who runs her shipyard, is distracted, and so she doesn't quite learn it. And also, now she kind of wants to know what's wrong with Valley, see if she can help him out. Roz has finally figured out that, hey, I can train proficiency too, and starts to work on some light armor proficiency. Spends four weeks doing that because her int score is so high, she only needs one more week, which is super awesome. And she also orders some custom leather armor stud it because that's the most AC. I am trying to make this wizard as least squishy as I can. And then with the end of the domain turns, it's Brindis's birthday. We don't really do anything for it. And that's the end of the session. If you enjoyed this recap, make sure that you hit the like button down below and also subscribe. And with that, I will see you next time.